I, I tend to have a, a profound effect on people when I meet them. It's not because I'm like, I don't know, some the second coming or anything like that. It's just because I know myself and I'm right here, right now. And so when I engage with somebody, they feel like I really am there with them. And that's what, a, that's what everyone wants, right? Is to feel like someone, uh, that they are significant, that they're taking up space in this world, that they matter. And a woman wants that from a man. That's the, that's the sexiest thing she can feel, is to feel truly desired and wanted uh, and understood. Last year when we were, we were in LA for the PUA summit, and we were told, uh, your natural shit's going to not work in LA. Um, it's just not going to work. Because over there, you've got to have value, man. You've got to have value. And I, I really hate the idea, the way, that, the way that the idea of value has been presented in the seduction community is really misleading. Um, someone was outside talking to me earlier, sorry, I can't remember who, and we were talking about, um, what were we talking about? I can't remember. We were talking about something and he said, oh, that's, so when you do that, when you say that with authority, it, it, it raises your value. And I didn't even know what he meant. I think the idea of raising and lowering value is, is something that will really fuck guys up in this, in this situation. Because uh, you're constantly thinking, well, oh, hang on, did I get three more value points? Have I dropped her value a bit? You know, are we going to kind of like seesaw the value? That means nothing to me. I'm a valuable person. Everyone's fucking valuable. We are of value when we act like we are valuable. What's much more important than, you know, trying to make, essentially that's like trying to make you seem more important than she is. That's, that's what we're trying to, that's, that's the basis behind that idea. What's much more important than value is emotional impact. Is the way, is the impact that you have on someone and at an emotional core when you meet them or when you interact with them. Because when we were in LA, we were told, you know, the girls there are going to ask you, are you a producer? Do you drive a big shiny car with expensive stuff on it? And, uh, you know, I don't even drive and um, I certainly not, don't produce anything. Um, you know, we were living on a shoestring as we always are, uh, myself and my, my coaches. And we thought, oh, well, I guess we won't get laid in LA then, if that's the way it is. I remember we were in a bar and I'm, I'm talking to a girl and... I said, oh, my name's James, and she shakes my hand and looks away. And I said, excuse me, if you want to say hello to me, just look me in the eyes, please, or don't say hello. And snaps out of it in this moment and says, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, it's just so much bullshit here. Yeah? Now, then we had a very, very real and deep uh, interaction. Because in a town like that, where everything is plastic, where people are full of shit a lot, uh, and are trying to constantly prove their value, and if they don't have it, trying to you know, lie about it or insinuate that they have more value, which is the basis of where a lot of the uh, early seduction systems were built in that city for that very reason, to try and fight at their level against their rules. And you'll always lose if you try and play the value game, because there's always someone richer and faster and more producing than you are. And I'm not interested in, in fighting on somebody else's terms. When girls would ask me, what kind of car do you drive? I said, I don't drive. As if, like, why would I dr need to drive? And then that just totally fucks up their value system. There's nothing for, there's nothing for them to judge me on, because I don't even have a car. I don't know how to drive. It's irrelevant. So tell me some more about you. What are you really into? It's the, it's the intensity of the emotional impact that you have on somebody that is going to determine uh, what they want to do with you in their, in their life. Which brings me to my second major point in terms of internal change, which is your intent. You cannot have intent without awareness, because if you're unaware of yourself, you, don't, you can't project a clear intent. But let's presume that you do have an awareness of yourself, your physicality, the way your emotions are working, and you can just sit with it without putting any subjective judgments on it, just allow it to be what it is. Then what you need to do is you need to project something out into the world. Now when we're looking at women, what we need to be projecting at the core is that I want to fuck you. Anything else is a lie. Unless, unless you really actually don't want to have sex with her and you, want to, you think she's a, a nice, slightly unattractive person, you want to be friends with her, don't project I want to fuck you because that will confuse her. 
Because the problem is a lot of who here considers themselves maybe to be a nice guy? Like that they've they've been told they've been a nice guy. Isn't that suck when a girl says you're a really nice guy? Because you know what's going to happen next. Yeah. No one ever says you're a really nice girl, guy and I'd like you to throat fuck me. They never say that. <laughs> Do they? What, what I would say is that nice guys are liars, actually. And they're not doing it necessarily out of, out of a need to be nice and wanting to please people and make people's lives better. They're doing it as a behavioural strategy to try and get what they want because that's what they've practised. Okay, so if they're, if they're nice enough to somebody, then uh, she will hopefully see your charms at some point and you know, maybe decide that she wants to breed with you. It doesn't really happen like that. The Aussie lean is way more effective because it, the intent is clear. I want to have sex with you or I want to pass out. Yep. So what you can, guys can do is practice this. And I've been doing this all around London. It's really funny because people don't make a lot of eye contact here. But I make people make eye contact with me because when I'm walking down the street, I'm standing tall and like a laser beam, I'm just seeking out eyeballs everywhere. I'm trying to avoid the men's ones. Sometimes it gets mixed up, gets confusing. But I'm mainly going for the girls. And as I'm walking along, I'm just looking them dead in one eye because you can't look at both eyes at once. Try it. It's, it, it's weird. Okay? So you pick one eye and you just project. Think, feel, and project. I want to fuck you. I think you're hot. You're awesome. You're confident. You're cheeky. Or any variation on that. And what you do, what you'll notice is when you start doing that, walking down the street, the world changes. Girls start looking at you in a very different way and often you'll just get all sorts of invitations because you walk past and look a girl in the eyes like, I want to fuck you and she'll just look and stand you and she's like, and? And then there's your approach invitation. <laughs> yeah? So when I, when I see a girl and I'm going to approach her, that's the first thing I do. I check in awareness, project my intent. Um, I'm unashamedly showing her that I'm a man, that I want to have sex with her. I don't necessarily always go up and verbally state this because in my mind, often that can just release pressure because when you go up and you say, you're smoking hot, I think you, oh, you know, whatever, a direct opener, yeah, it's bold, it has an emotional impact, but at the same time, it can mean, to, she can interpret that as, well, oh, that's, that's nice, but I can have him, yeah? I'd kind of more, I, I tend to like to simmer my seductions and sometimes over long periods of time because I enjoy that, the drawn out. I, I enjoy the dance of the seduction as much as I do as having sex with a girl. Um, and so I will deliberately uh, leverage the pressure and the release on this. But the intent is always clear because even if I'm speaking about something innocuous, at the heart of it, my intent is showing her that yes, this is about sex and nothing else. Well, no, not nothing else, but that's the core of it. Okay, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I want to blaze through a couple of practical aspects for you. Now, let's just talk quickly now about external game. If we look at the idea of qualifying, because qualifying is, is mis, sort of misunderstood. A lot of guys think that you uh, ask a qualifying question, which is like, um, you know, what's cool about you? And the girl says, I'm an artist, and they go, cool, qualified. Yeah? It doesn't, that doesn't work. That's not qualification at all. To qualify somebody, they have to firstly give a fuck about the person that's qualifying them and there needs to be pressure on the person. They need to feel like they have to invest. That's the point of qualifying, is that when you ask the question, the qualifying question, I don't care what answer she gives me, unless she gives me an amazing answer and invests heaps, um, it's not good enough. That, that's my, that's my, the principle behind it. So I might say, what do you like? Which is one of my favourite qualifying questions. What do you like? Because it's ambiguous. Um, it could mean anything. And the girl will often say, oh, that's a hard question. Then you say, no, it's not. You just tell me what you like. And then if the hoop's too big, I can make it smaller. In bed, you know, cooking, I don't know, travel. Do you like to be tied up? Give me something. And what I'll do then is I'll hold intense pressure on her. I'll just look her in the eyes because I'm quite happy to sit there for a long period of time. And she will fill that gap. So I have a very simple formula you guys can use, QCQ, question, challenge, qualify. So we pick a qualifying question. Steve's over there like giving me some kind of like Good. Roman emperor thing. Yeah, listen. Yeah. Okay, so we pick a qualifying question, can be anything. And 
one thing to keep in mind is you do not need to uh, qualify only on core values. Because if you go up into a club and go up to a girl, you know, you're projecting intent, you just walk up there and you're like, what is it in life that is most important to you? <laughs> that, that's a really strange thing to do. Yeah? Whereas I was in a club in Germany the other week and I did exactly that, saw the girl and pulled her in and said, who the fuck are you? Is a qualifying question. And she's like, I'm some kind of girl. And I said, you are. And we made out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a microcosm of the QCQ formula. Whereas if I'm sitting in the park with a girl and I say, what, what's, what's really important to you right now? Totally appropriate. Makes sense. So the other thing is you can qualify and totally flip and shit. You can say to a girl, are you an early riser? Hang on, what's the other one? Do you go to bed late or are you an early riser? Do you like stripes or polka dots? It can be anything. It doesn't matter because the point is to create the pressure. If I say, do you like stripes of polka dot? And I hold the pressure, she's thinking, I don't know which one's right. Uh, stripes. And then the C in this formula is the challenge. I will always challenge her on an answer. Really? I'm holding pressure on her and she's like, stripes? No, polka dots, definitely polka dots. When I've applied that pressure onto her and she's invested and give me what I want, what I've created is an emotional impact, emotional spike in that moment. That's the only point of the qualifying framework. And then, I won't leave it, because if you only challenge her, really, and she's like, polka dots, and you're like, fuck you. Then it's just, you being an asshole. <laughs> then you need to release the pressure and reward her for uh, doing what you want, which then, of course, also trains her to uh, have good feelings every time she does something for you. Yeah, which is a bit nasty, but that, well, it's a bit tricky, but it works. <laughs> yeah. So then I go, Awesome. I'm, I'm a striped man myself. Or actually, I'm a polka dot man, but I need someone to, you know, juxtapose me. All right, let's go. Either way, it doesn't matter. So if I qualify her on something important, all right, what are you famous for? And she said, um, well, I'm a dancer. That's not good enough. 